Julian Rocks, off the coast of Byron Bay, Australia. Home to nearly 50 different species of coral and over 500 fish species. It is here, at the most easterly point of the Australian mainland, that tropical and temperate species live together. This film takes you on a marine journey through the seasons in Byron Bay to encounter an amazing kaleidoscope of life. Looking out from the main beach at Byron Bay, a rocky outcrop located just two and a half kilometres offshore forms a well-known landmark in the bay. Julian Rocks is an extension of Cape Byron separated by water and forms a most unique marine environment. Unlike coral, the rocky reefs around Julian Rocks are not built from calcium carbonate deposits of corals. This rock formation consists of ancient igneous rock, remnants of a volcanic eruption more than 20 million years ago. Here boulders, rocks and rocky ledges provide a habitat for a spectacular variety of marine species from both tropical and temperate regions. In the summer months, the East Australian current, which flows from the north, brings warmer waters. Butterfly fishes, angel fishes, and many other tropical marine species become more prolific as the waters warm around Julian Rocks. At its peak, the water temperatures can reach 28 degrees Celsius. As winter approaches, the weakening East Australian current allows nutrient-rich, cooler waters from the south to become more dominant. Studies suggest that the East Australian current also causes upwellings at Cape Byron, drawing cool, nutrient-rich water from a depth of 200 metres or more. At its coldest, the water temperatures at Julian Rocks can drop to 17 degrees Celsius. Due to the range of water temperatures and changing currents throughout the year, this location is unique and renowned for its incredible diversity and abundance of marine life. The rocky reef provides an ideal habitat for cephalopods, literally meaning headfooters, which include octopus, cuttlefish and squid. Several species of octopus have been sighted on the reefs around Julian Rocks. Generally shy creatures, these invertebrates prefer to hide under rocks and ledges when they feel threatened, holding shell fragments and rubble in front of them. However, octopus are also powerful and aggressive hunters. Unlike most other cephalopods, octopus have almost entirely soft bodies, as they do not possess an internal shell, like cuttlefish or squid. A beak, similar in shape to a parrot's beak, is their only hard part. This enables them to pursue their prey through narrow cracks between rocks and also to elude larger predators. Octopuses are very intelligent and have keen eyesight. In fact, their eyes are among the most developed in the animal kingdom. Amazingly, they have similar eyes to humans. Although they can change colour at will, they do not appear to have colour vision. They can perceive the polarisation of light to enhance their perception of contrast. Octopus breathe using gills as fish do, but are unique as they have three hearts pumping water over their gills. Two special organs attached to their brain, called statocysts, allow the octopus to sense gravity and therefore the orientation of its body. The octopus is a carnivore, usually feeding on crabs, shrimps and mussels, but the larger species of octopus have been known to hunt small sharks. Using remarkable intelligence, this octopus engulfs a whole rock so that its prey can't escape. Once trapped, it will drag its prey towards its powerful beak-like jaws. It will then bite its prey, injecting it with poisonous saliva to kill it.
Often octopus move about on the seabed using their eight arms. A faster way of moving is through jet propulsion. This, however, is a very energy-consuming way to travel. The octopus is generally a solitary animal. Mating can be risky for the male. Being smaller than the female, he risks being attacked. The female watches his body postures and skin patterns. This ritual can take many hours. Once accepted, the male stretches out a modified arm towards the female. Here the arm reaches out to pass his sperm into the female's mantle cavity. Then the female leaves quickly for the safety of the reef. Despite their strength and intelligence, they too fall prey to larger predators, like the wobbegong shark. Confusing the attacker by spouting a cloud of ink is an octopus's last resort. But this doesn't always work. The cuttlefish around Julian Rocks can be found hovering just above the ocean floor and usually move around in pairs. When cuttlefish feel threatened, they initially might try to blend in with their surroundings and almost disappear from sight. They are true masters of camouflage. If approached too close for comfort, they will try to make themselves look as large as possible by extending their arms and rapidly flashing colours are displayed, often as a warning. Their skin flashes a fast-changing pattern as communication to other cuttlefish and to camouflage them from predators. This colour-changing function is produced by groups of red, yellow, brown and black pigmented chromatophores, which are pigment containing and light reflecting cells. Cuttlefish skin can have up to 200 of these specialized pigment cells per square millimeter. Cuttlefish swim using their fins. They can move more quickly when they need to by shooting a jet of water from their siphon. Cuttlefish search the reef tirelessly, hunting small mollusks, crabs, shrimp, fish, and even other cuttlefish.
Another member of the cephalopods, the squid, are seen around Julian rocks only occasionally. Unlike the cuttlefish, who have a thicker internal shell called the cuttlebone, squid have a pen, a very thin shell remnant for support. Like the other cephalopods, they use a specialised foot called a siphon, which enables them to hunt and escape quickly by expelling water under pressure. Although they are voracious hunters, they in turn are preyed upon by large pelagic fish. At the other end of the food chain are the sharks. As the water temperature starts to reach its maximum in early January, leopard sharks aggregate at Julian rocks. Very little is known about these prehistoric looking and mysterious sharks. They mainly lie together in small groups on sandy patches and can be easily recognized by their round forehead, pale skin with leopard-like spots and their characteristic tail. The diet of the leopard shark consists mainly of invertebrates and small fish. Leopard sharks are egg-laying sharks, but no egg cases have ever been found near Julian rocks. Much of the biology of the leopard shark is still unknown, including where the individuals found at Julian rocks go in winter and whether the same animals return to the few known aggregation sites each year. Remora, or sucker fish, follow leopard sharks around. The dorsal fin of the remora is modified into a sucker, with which it forms a temporary attachment to the shark and other large fish. When the shark feeds, the remora scavenges the scraps. As the water begins to cool in early May, the leopard sharks simply disappear from Julian rocks. The reef is home to many species of sharks. Blind sharks can be found in rocky crevices all year round. They grow to 1.2 meters and usually feed at night on invertebrates and small fishes. The colcloth shark uses sensory barbells close to its mouth to search the seabed for food. The most commonly observed shark around Julian rocks is the wobbegong shark. Their intricate colour pattern, which helps to break up its outline, makes them blend seamlessly into their surrounds. Three species frequent the area around the rock. The smallest, the dwarf ornate wobbegong, only grows to one metre and is observed regularly in the shallower waters. The similar looking spotted wobbegong can be distinguished from the ornate wobbegong by its colour patterns, which consist of broad dark saddles and the distinct circles formed of groupings of small white dots. The larger, ornate wobbegongs, which are not as common in this area, form a separate species from the dwarf ornate wobbegongs. They can grow up to three metres in length.
Wobby gongs mostly lay at the bottom during daylight hours. Feeding occurs mainly at night. Their prey includes fish, crayfish, crabs and octopus. Many larger marine creatures are hosts to parasites and it is believed that these wobbegongs behavior is used as a method to help them remove these parasites. The month of May, when water temperatures start to drop, marks the start of the grey nurse shark season. These ferocious looking sharks prefer the deeper waters. They often congregate in the sandy gutters on the north side of Julian Rocks at a depth of around 20 metres. Through the 1950s and 60s, these sharks were hunted to near extinction in Australian waters, as they were wrongly believed to be man-eaters. With their total population estimated to be less than 500, the grey nurse shark population on the east coast of Australia is now considered critically endangered. As a measure to protect these magnificent sharks, Julian Rocks has now become a marine sanctuary within the Cape Byron Marine Park. Grain earth sharks bear live young from eggs, which hatch inside the uterus. Female grain earth sharks actually have two uteruses. The first hatched sharks will start devouring their siblings and typically only one or two pups are born from each gestation period, which lasts 9 to 12 months. Females then enter a resting stage for around one year and as a result produce one pup per year or less on average, which gives this species the lowest reproductive rate of any shark, contributing further to their very vulnerable status. White-spotted guitarfish are quite often mistaken for sharks, but they are actually rays, which are closely related to sharks, both having cartilage instead of bones to support their bodies. There are many species of rays that visit Julian rocks frequently. The blue-spotted stingrays are around all year, but in summer, they seem particularly active and can be found in the shallows, piling on top of each other in the sand. This is quite peculiar behavior as they are believed to be a solitary species. However, at Julian Rocks, hundreds of blue spotted stingrays can be observed in very tight groups in the same area. This occurs for about two weeks, usually in early to mid January and could be interpreted as mating behavior. Manta rays visit this area on a regular basis. However, these magnificent animals prefer the warmer waters in late summer and early autumn. 
The manta ray is the largest species of ray in the world, and wingspans of four meters and more are relatively common. Unlike bottom-dwelling rays, mantas spend most of their time on or near the surface, feeding on plankton. Back on the seabed, num rays, also called electric rays, become visible in higher numbers during the beginning of autumn in March. They actively swim around in the shallows, presumably looking for a mate. This behaviour has been observed during the same weeks of the year for many years around Julian Rocks and has not been reported elsewhere. Special organs, which contain modified muscle cells located in the pectoral fins of these rays, are able to generate a strong electric shock as high as 200 volts to stun their prey or deter any predators. Num rays bury themselves under the sand and wait for prey to swim past. Spotted eagle rays are seen all year round in a variety of sizes. Their snout can vary in shape from spade-like in juveniles to pointed in larger individuals. Eagle rays search through the sand for food. They are mostly solitary but sometimes travel in small groups of two to five. Occasionally, spectacular schools of Kaunos rays, sometimes numbering in their hundreds, pass by Julian Rocks. The reef is also home to the sparsely spotted stingray, the eastern fiddler ray, the eastern shovelnose ray, and very occasionally, the southern eagle ray. The magnificent smooth stingrays start appearing regularly in October when the warmer currents become more prevalent. These somewhat shy animals are powerfully built and with their maximum wingspan of two meters can weigh up to 350 kilograms. These massive rays often bury themselves in the sand. As bottom dwellers, they devour small fish, mollusks, and other invertebrates 
hidden under the surface of the sand. A stingray lashes its tail only as a defensive measure when it is surprised or attacked. The venomous spines of their tails are grooved to help the venom travel to the tip. Julian Rocks is home to three species of marine turtles. The green turtle, the loggerhead, and the hawksbill turtle. All three marine turtle species are currently experiencing serious threats to their survival. In most turtles, the shell is made up of bones covered on the outside by large scales. The number, shape, and distribution of these as well as the scales found on the face and head, are used to differentiate species. Only the sex of adult turtles can be easily distinguished. The adult male has a long, thick tail that extends well beyond the end of the carapace. Adult females have short tails and often shorter and thinner claws. There is considerable variation in growth rates, but green and loggerhead turtles may require as long as 30 to 50 years to reach sexual maturity. Females do not breed every year. The green turtle, for example, has non-breeding periods of between five and eight years. Although their lives start on land, sea turtles spend most of their lives in the sea, and the general rule is that females come back to the beach only for nesting, and males never return to land. At Julian Rocks, turtles are not seasonal and can be seen at any time of the year.
Adult green turtles are unique among sea turtles in that they have a completely vegetarian diet and feed on sea grasses and algae. However, juvenile green turtles are known to also feed on jellyfish. This juvenile green turtle tries to get the jellyfish to stay close to the surface so it can easily come up for a breath of air whilst its prey stays nearby. Hawksbill turtles feed mainly on invertebrates, like sea squirts and anemones. Even though it would appear that the rocks here are covered in plant life, in fact they are not. These are all marine invertebrate animals. Unlike the green turtle, the hawksbill turtle is completely carnivorous. Even though turtles are very much at home underwater, they are in fact reptiles and need to go to the surface to breathe. During resting periods, they can stay submerged for long periods of time. If they become more active, they will need to return to the surface more often. For loggerhead turtles, non-breathing periods of up to seven hours have been recorded. Underwater, their graceful swimming motion appears effortless and is a highly energy efficient method of movement which helps to preserve the oxygen stored in their bloodstream. Although most prey is generally attached to substrate or slow moving, catching it is not always easy. On this occasion, the anemone is not an easy prey, as it is able to retract, and the highly territorial anemone fish puts up a serious fight in defense of its home. Loggerheads can reach enormous sizes. One very large loggerhead seems to call Julian Rocks its home. Its size indicates that it must have been around for a long time. Loggerheads carapace size can be up to two meters in diameter, but this loggerhead's carapace is about a meter. The lifespan of the loggerhead turtle is estimated to be 50 years or more and adults grow to an average weight of about 100 kilos. Equipped with powerful jaws, they can crush crabs and mollusks, and even the spines of the sea urchin are no defense.
Marine life does not only come to find shelter at Julian Rocks. Food is abundant here, attracting schools of streamlined predators. Pelagic hunters, such as Mulloway and Yellowtail Kingfish, are fast swimmers that can be found regularly in the deeper waters around Julian Rocks. Mulloway can grow up to two metres and often travel in schools of over 100 individuals. Other pelagics include big-eyed trevally, or jacks, as well as golden and bluefin trevally. Hunting closer to the reef are the spectacular lionfish. Several species are observed in this area, including the common lionfish, the dwarf lionfish, and the spot-finned lionfish. Lionfish are also known as firefish and have extremely venomous dorsal fin spines. These spines are used mainly for defense, but are also used to steer prey into a corner. The venom glands at the base of certain fin spines produce a number of toxins which can be injected into a potential predator. Lionfish generally prefer more tropical habitats. They prey on a wide variety of smaller fishes, shrimps and crabs. They have few predators in their native range. Their prey, which is hunted mainly at night, is obtained with a lightning quick snap of the jaws and swallowed whole. Moray eels can look quite fearsome as their mouths are equipped with razor-sharp teeth. Several species of moray can be found at Julian Rocks, including the Abbot's moray, the white-eyed moray, the green moray, the mosaic moray, and the sieve pattern moray. The wide open jaws are generally not a sign of aggression. The gape is necessary for respiration as water has to be actively pumped across the gills. The bodies of moray eels are not protected by scales. They secrete a protective mucus over their scaleless skin. Some species of moray are believed to have very poor eyesight. They do, however, have an excellent sense of smell. The moray's nostrils have developed into two pairs of tubes Water passes into the front tube, over the smell-sensing nasal apparatus, and out the other nostril. Most morays are found in crevices and holes, affording protection from predators and allowing them to strike at prey from a hidden position. Eels swim by flexing their whole body into lateral waves. They can actually swim backwards just as well, which allows them to quickly retract into holes and crevices to avoid predators.
Another local resident is the blue groper. The blue groper is actually a wrasse, and like many wrasses, is a sex-changing species. Blue gropers start their reproductive life as females, which are generally smaller and more reddish-brown in colour. Exactly what triggers the change in sex is not fully understood, but it is believed that the removal or death of a male results in the largest female changing sex. Adult males are bright blue and very inquisitive, which has made them particularly susceptible to spearfishing in the past. On rocky reefs like Julian Rocks, their diet consists mainly of sea urchins. With all its protective spines, a sea urchin hardly seems like an easy meal, but blue gropers can easily turn them over and with a powerful lunge, crack open the relatively unprotected area around the sea urchin's mouth. Anemone fish live in a mutual relationship, also called symbiosis, with sea anemones. The anemone fish gets protected from predators by the anemone and amazingly becomes immune to the stinging cells of its host. In return, the anemone is believed to benefit from the consumption of parasites by the fish and the increased water circulation from the anemone fish fin fanning action. Once an anemone has been adopted, the anemone fish will defend it vigorously. At Julian Rocks, anemone fish start laying their eggs when the water gets warmer, around mid-December. They utilise flat surfaces, protected by their host anemones. The eggs are cared for mainly by the male, which can be found fanning the orange egg mass with their fins, providing its offspring with oxygen-rich water. Hatching occurs after a period of six to 10 days in a natural rhythm connected to the phases of the moon. If the female dies, the largest male changes sex and another male in the group grows, taking its place as the breeding male. The larger life at Julian Rocks is easily spotted but smaller creatures are as abundant. They include crabs, shrimps, shells and snails, as well as a myriad of small fish species.
Up to 43 species of coral have been reported. These grow in suitable parts of the rocky reef. Not all corals are hard corals like this table coral. Various species of soft corals and black coral trees also form part of this environment. A variety of ascidians or sea squirts, hydroids and various sponge species add to the diversity of life around Julian Rocks. Sea urchins are hard-bodied animals. Their shells are often covered in long, sharp spines, which are used for locomotion, protection, and for trapping drifting algae for food. Sea urchins play an essential role in a balanced marine environment. Looking closer, one can appreciate their beauty. Not every sea urchin looks the same. They come in many different colors, shapes, and sizes. Some of the relatives of the sea urchin common to Julian rocks are the sea stars, feather stars, and even the occasional basket star, which even though they may look like plants, are all animals. Few marine creatures are as mysterious as the jellyfish. Jellyfish occur in a wide variety of sizes, shapes and colours. Most are semi-transparent or glassy and bell-shaped, measuring anything from a centimetre to more than a metre across the bell. It is unknown why these flute mouths seem attracted to the dying jellyfish. They might be scavenging for small scraps of food. Regardless of their size and shape, most jellyfish are very fragile, often containing less than 5% of solid organic matter. Adult jellyfish drift into an area with limited control over their movements. Muscles that allow it to contract its bell, forcing water out of the opening, allow for some regulation of vertical movement. Despite their ability to move vertically, jellyfish depend on ocean currents, tides and wind for horizontal movement. Some juvenile pelagic fish use jellyfish as a protective nursery. Jellyfish are carnivorous feeding mostly on a variety of microscopic animals, comb jellies, and occasionally other jellyfish. 
Jellyfish themselves are preyed upon by various species of fish, as well as some turtles. Julian Rocks is also home to other soft-bodied creatures, like the colourful nudibranchs. Nudibranchs are essentially snails without shells. Nudibranch literally means naked gill, and in most species, the gills are easily visible on their back. The tentacles on their head are sensitive to touch, taste and smell. All known nudibranchs are grazing carnivores, they are known to feed on a wide variety of invertebrate animals including sponges, hydroids, sea squirts, anemones, corals, and sometimes even other nudibranchs. However, each species of nudibranch tend to be selective feeders and many only eat one particular prey species. Nudibranchs feeding on hydroids or coral store their prey's stinging cells in their body, enabling them to deter potential predators. Nudibranchs possess both male and female sex organs at the same time, which increases the probability of finding a mate, and every mature individual of the same species becomes a potential partner. After mating, egg masses are laid mostly on or near the organism on which they feed. Egg masses vary in shape and size, and their colour often matches the colour of the species. Quite often, these egg masses form thick ribbons wound into a spiral. The eggs develop into a larval form, which drifts in the ocean currents as plankton, an important mechanism for the exploitation of new habitats, since adult nudibranchs move very slowly and cannot travel long distances. There are many other species of marine life that call Julian rocks their home. Here, in a rare situation where tropical and temperate currents converge to form this unique environment, nature celebrates with an astonishing abundance of life.